Okay, um, welcome everyone. Let's pray and then we will begin. Would um, anyone like to lead in prayer? If you have, there's no mic. There's no mic over there. Okay, fine. So uh, then the online students, if you may lead, that will be really wonderful. Um, I want to request one of us to please lead. Anyone? Uh, Esther? Esther? Esther Clement? Yes. Uh, praise the Lord, sister. Just a moment. Yeah, sure, sure, sister. A gracious, loving, heavenly Father, God, we praise and thank you for your loving presence amidst of us this morning time, O oh Lord God. As we begin our journey to learn, O oh Lord God, and uh, learn from your revelations, O oh Father God, Lord, Lord, you take over our thoughts and our, our Lord, our hearts, O oh Lord God, that we may imbibe and Lord, richly, Lord God, be blessed by the word. And the learning we get from our pastor, oh Lord God, bless her mightily, Lord God, for the wonderful service. And Lord God, fill us all with your divine wisdom, Lord, that the spirit of excellence be upon us. Father God, we commit and dedicate this day into your mighty hands. We pray this prayer in the most precious name of the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Uh, thank you, Esther. And this morning, as we go through uh, our next uh, subject or the next topic here i will require people to read scriptures uh, and since we don't we are not using a mic here on campus i want to request the online students to be prepared to please read us uh, some of the scriptures as we go along uh, and i hope that's okay all right um, so in the last class we began to speak about faith and the fact that the lord jesus taught us about faith so even though we examined the concept of sovereignty where God is able and can do anything, he always um, depends on man's faith or he has chosen to depend on man's faith. In other words, we must demonstrate faith to receive from God. We must demonstrate faith to see certain things happen. Without faith, those things will not happen. Even if God is able, even if God is uh, strong enough or capable to do those things, our faith is very, very important. Okay? And we saw how Jesus taught about it. And Jesus said, remember, I made all of us repeat, have faith in God. It was Jesus who said, have faith in God. When we have faith in God, there are things that, um, are done or accomplished, which cannot be done otherwise. So we looked at what Jesus, um, you know, did regarding faith or his um, association with faith and what he taught about faith. So that is what we are looking at right now. So we are in chapter three of our notes and we went, uh, you know, section by section. And the first one we said is that Jesus recognized and responded to faith. So whenever he went uh, someplace to minister, he could identify faith. So from his inner being, he could sense the faith that someone carried within them. So that is noticed everywhere in the ministry of Jesus. He recognized faith. And whenever he found faith, he responded to faith. And then in the next section, we said that Jesus was the one who asked people to have faith in order to receive. So even when he knew what people needed, he expected them to tell him what is it that they wanted from him. And we saw some examples like the blind men when they came to Jesus. Um, he asked them the question, do you believe that I am able to do this? Right. So he knew that, you know, people had heard about him and all that, but he tested the faith. Like, what is it that you believe regarding this matter? And when they told him, you know, yes, Lord, we believe that you can heal us. 
then he went ahead and said according to your faith let it be done for you so it's as if the lord jesus was asking people to have faith it's when people had faith that you know something will be released to them so even today as we look at our own lives there are so many things that we we want to see god move in right so many areas of our lives where we want breakthroughs we want deliverance we want healing uh, we want miracles we want blessings but god is looking for faith he will it's as if he is asking us do you believe this can happen and it's when we respond saying yes lord we believe or i believe you can do this that's when jesus would say okay according to your faith so whatever is your faith you receive according to that faith <laughs> so jesus asked for people to carry faith in their hearts the other thing that we saw last um, class is that the lord jesus encouraged faith even in hopeless situations um the daughter of jairus had died and the people around said why do you even want to ask jesus like let him go because your daughter is already dead but jesus encouraged him jesus said you know believe don't be afraid you just believe similarly lazarus when lazarus died same thing jesus said if you believe you will see the glory of god so in a seemingly hopeless situation if we find that jesus is encouraging hope uh, encouraging faith okay so that really shows us that when we have faith even in a hopeless situation god can do something and in both these cases what had happened to the people jairus's daughter and uh, lazarus what happened to them they died okay so it's a really hopeless situation the worst that you know one would expect uh, to happen when they go for ministry but even in the midst of a hopeless situation the lord jesus encouraged people to have faith and when they had faith there was a breakthrough so now let's see what are some of the other lessons that we can learn regarding faith and why the reason why we are learning about all this is so that we can use faith in our relationship with god in our walk with god and understand how faith operates because all of us have to apply faith isn't it we all need to apply faith in daily circumstances we need to apply faith not just when there is a crisis in every circumstance we must apply faith and when we have faith mountains are moved doors are opened okay um so faith is essential faith is very important jesus encouraged the fourth section here says jesus encouraged people to act their faith so there is something about taking a step in faith now we may carry faith in our hearts but there are times when god says if you have faith you've got to do something about it okay so there is an incident where 10 lepers came to jesus this is in luke chapter 17 verses 11 through 19 and uh, they came and they uh, you know begged jesus to heal them and what did he tell them he told them in verse 14 go show yourself to the priests and it continues and so it was that as they went they were cleansed so there are the lepers who came to jesus and they're asking jesus to heal them jesus could have said a word or jesus could have touched them or uh, jesus could have you know um, maybe rebuked the leprosy so many things jesus could have done but he depended on their faith how did he depend on their faith he told them 
go your way show yourself to the priests and the scripture says as they went they were cleansed so it just goes to reveal that when we carry faith in our hearts sometimes the miracle will come when we step out with the faith now these men lepers they could have um, stood there and said we won't go what if they didn't go what would have happened if they didn't go exactly so they will they would not have received their miracle which is healing from leprosy if they didn't go but because they went what happened what happened they were healed they were cleansed okay and the miracle took place so what was jesus's expectation for the 10 men to put action to their faith okay now there are other instances as well there's a noble man who comes to jesus and he asks jesus uh, to come and heal his child before his child dies and jesus tells him you go on your way because your son lives and the scripture says in john 4 verse 50 that the man believed and he went and his son was healed so there is an action when god tells us something we may not have all the answers about how it is going to happen you know where it is going to happen imagine if the lepers and this uh, father the noble man if they had stood there and asked questions to jesus how how will i be healed how will she be healed how will he be healed what are you going to do what are the steps that you want to employ jesus would have been like okay you know i can already see your faith but instead of standing there and uh, questioning jesus not that having questions is bad or wrong but um the point i'm making is acting on your faith right instead of demonstrating unbelief in a given moment is very very important so both these people or both these um you know uh, testimonies reveal that people acted on what jesus said so sometimes god wants us to take a step before we can see the manifestation of the promise um and i mean in my own life i'm just trying to think there are so many examples where uh i've had to take the step first and then the miracle comes before obeying it's quite scary that god is asking you to do this but what could be the outcome and you know you're wondering but when jesus says something when god says something you just have to take the step and as you take the step the healing will come uh, the wisdom will come the understanding will come the resources will come right and so many wonderful miracles begin to take place so i was just thinking of the time when you know i had to uh, do my higher studies and it was um, a really challenging um, season because uh, you know i made a choice of a particular subject that i wanted to study and the uh, a place where i want to go and study but all the paperwork to go to that place uh, it just got delayed like it's as if you know i need to leave um, in um, i i needed to leave on the 12th and it's already the 7th and i don't have uh, you know my uh, the letter that they stamp and say you you can go right to even travel i don't even have that approval in my hand till the 7th of the date but it was as if god was telling me you have to go you just go okay and it's the funniest um, uh, situation that i have been in because i was packing my bags and i was you know getting ready and all with not with things still not done 
and um, it was amazing how things fell in place but it was when i was moving towards what god had told me to do so it always reminds me of how god comes in and he ministers when we take action on what he is telling us to do i remember another uh, incident of uh, one of our students in the location where i minister she had a very similar situation she had applied for you know her higher studies and she was going same thing like she was not getting her papers on time and even after she went even after she went um, there were many things which um, didn't really work out you know for her to get a, a job on the university campus uh, the portal was not opening and it, it was pretty um, you know very um, a sort of discouraging but uh, i remember even her faith journey how she was taking step after step to just do what god is telling her to do so right from here like she would message me and say the portal is not opening can you agree with me let us pray together so uh, i i wrote down a prayer for her sent the message to her and said okay agree with me we both are going to pray this prayer you prayed over the computer in the name of jesus log in prayed over the computer i know it sounds really crazy but you know prayed over the computer in the name of jesus command it you will open in jesus name i am going to do this i'm going to sign up and uh, it's amazing because after we send the prayer she tried she had tried for two days or something and it was not opening after she said the prayer and she logged in it opened and she texted me back saying pastor it's opened you know and I, i'm just going to apply now and uh, she got the uh, you know part time job on the campus so step by step expressing your faith and just moving forward but you need to take action imagine if we say yes god told me that i'm going to do this course uh, but it looks like a closed door and um, i'm not going to do anything whenever he wants to open let him open whenever he wants to teach me this let him teach you know whenever he wants to give me that uh, opportunity let him give and if i sit down nothing will work so there are times when we have to put our faith to action if i believe you know god has called me god is the one who is moving me in this path what action is god expecting me to take okay i will take that action right so initially it may not feel comfortable you may think that oh am i acting too fast what am i doing but when god is leading you there are some circumstances and situations where he will ask us to act you first act and as you do it the miracle will come okay there are times in church uh, we'll you know go to all these things later but i'm just giving you some practical examples when maybe there is a word of knowledge when we call out and we say oh god is healing um uh, pain in the shoulder okay generally what we say along with that is move your shoulders check right how does it help to move the shoulders and check because you're putting action to your faith so as you believe and as you move your hand what happens sometimes that's when the that's when the healing comes that's when the miracle happens you have to act on it till we act on it nothing will happen right so faith to be expressed through action and jesus taught that there were times when he expected the people to do something you have faith okay show me do something that's how he um he demanded faith from people's heart so when we say that we have faith we need to take action so that is um you know something that we observe in scripture another example given here is from john chapter 9 when there is a blind man and jesus mi mixes um, you know uh, some clay uh, puts it on his eyes and he tells him you go and wash in the pool of siloam so till that man went and washed in the pool of siloam what happened healing didn't come but once he washed then the healing came so 
though we say we have faith we've got to show our faith with action right so it's it's like saying okay i believe god has called me for this ministry okay what are we doing if god has called us for that ministry what are the steps we are taking or god has called me for this career what are the steps that we are taking in order for us to serve in that role so um as the lord leads take the connected or the corresponding action that reveals the faith which we carry in our hearts okay so let's move on the next point here is that jesus demonstrated that faith could affect nature um uh, there was a situation when jesus and his disciples encountered a storm they were in a boat and they encountered a storm in luke chapter 8 and at that time the disciples what happened to them they got scared they were fearful looking at the storm and they come and they wake jesus up and um, and imagine you know jesus is so calm that even in the storm he is sleeping they come and wake up jesus and uh, they ask him to help them and in verse 24 they come and say master master we are perishing uh, then he arose and rebuked the wind and the raging of the water and they ceased and there was a calm so they received their miracle by getting jesus's attention they woke him up and then jesus woke up he spoke to the winds he spoke to the waves and it calmed down okay but the next thing that we see in verse 25 is jesus was quite upset and it's not a happy situation when jesus is upset so he's telling his disciples now the storm has ended but in verse 25 he says to his disciples where is your faith why do you think he said where is your faith okay someone from the online batch would need to answer me today ha huh? yes so um thank you akil for that jesus had told them that they will go to the other side so what was the promise of god that they will reach the other side as they travel uh, on the boat but when the storm came they lost their faith they got so scared that they thought they're going to sink or they're going to die uh they woke jesus up to save their lives but it was as if jesus was asking them but i told you you'll be fine where is your faith some small um circumstance happened and they all got scared so jesus is saying i thought you'll trust me even when things go wrong that you're going to be strong look at the way you're getting scared and look at the um uh, you know the the way you are revealing your unbelief right so that is why he's asking them where is your faith what happened to your faith what else does he say um yeah so he asks them where is your faith now where is your faith was more like a rebuke rebuke is uh, a scolding when you know somebody says what i told you to do this you didn't do it it's like a scolding or a, a rebuke to the disciples another reason why jesus rebuked them is because when the storm happened he expected them to use their faith to calm the storm so ideally what should have happened is when there was a stormy situation the disciples who have been with jesus for so long they should have known that they can also speak to the winds and the waves and it will calm down but nobody carried any faith in their hearts in order to do this okay? 
they had already seen Jesus uh, showing his power over nature. They had seen how Jesus could multiply food, how Jesus turned water into wine. They had seen, um, you know, or, or rather in Jesus' life, uh, we see him dealing with nature quite powerfully. He walked on the water. Right? So even when it came to nature, Jesus demonstrated his faith and he released the power of his faith by issuing a command. So what do we learn from this? The same thing is applicable today because when we look at nature, uh, there is in as per God's design, when we release faith, it affects nature. Okay. So this is applicable when it comes to the weather or, you know, it is applicable when it uh, comes to, um, I, you know, I, there are so many things that you can look at in nature. But even when we uh, speak healing to the body, right, we can speak like you must have seen this. People say uh, commands like, uh, you know, I speak to the, um, I speak to uh, the um, circulatory system or I speak to the respiratory system uh, be healed in Jesus name or um, you know ears you will open in the name of Jesus I speak to the eyes uh, be healed in Jesus name one of the reasons why we do this is because it works we've seen that in the ministry of Jesus we can command nature and natural things will respond to commands or issues of uh, commands of faith Okay? So uh, this is for our application. And Jesus did quite a lot of that. And in fact, to teach his disciples regarding faith, in Mark chapter 11, what he does is he looks at a fig tree. Um, most of you will know this incident. There was a fig tree. And when Jesus went looking for figs, there was no figs. So what did he do? He rebuked it. Right? He cursed the fig tree. Now, what happened is that after Jesus cursed the fig tree, the very next day, Jesus and his disciples were walking past the same fig tree. And one of the disciples looked at the fig tree and said, Hey, look, it's dried up. Okay, it's like within 24 hours, Jesus cursed it the previous day. And now within 24 hours, what has happened? It dried up. And so the disciples are shocked. Uh, in you know, and they are amazed, and they're wondering how did this happen. That's when Jesus, uh, Mark eleven twenty two, he says, "Have faith in God." And then he goes on to talk about how if one has faith in their heart, and they speak to the mountain. Okay, so having faith in our heart and speaking is connected, and we observe that even nature. Um, response to our commands and wherever required in our faith journey there may be times when uh, we have to use this to be able to speak to the nature the winds the waves the clouds the rain uh, but what we understand from scripture is that when we carry faith in our hearts even these things are possible and Jesus actually expected his disciples who were in the boat with him to make those commands. But they didn't do it. That is why he rebuked them and he said, where is your faith? You could have done it. Why did you wake me up? You could have commanded. And so today, you and I can apply um, uh, this and we can speak even to nature. So uh, as we, I'm sharing all these things, I don't want us to keep this as knowledge in our heads and think that, okay, some time in my life, I'm going to use it. But you can practice it on a day-to-day -day basis. right? So if there is a situation where you would need to uh, speak, whether to your own body, somebody's body, or um, you know um, some weather condition situation, go ahead and speak, and you will see the result of it. Okay, so I don't know if uh, uh, it, it is too much to digest for some of us, but uh, it's in the scriptures and uh, this is how Jesus worked. 
Now let's move on. What else did we see Jesus do with faith? Um, in the section numbered six here, we find that Jesus accommodated people outside of God's agenda in response to faith. Now, uh, in the previous class, I think I mentioned that when Jesus did his ministry, he had a mandate. Okay? Or he was commissioned by the Father to bring salvation to the whole world. However, when he was demonstrating uh, healings and deliverances and all, he had still not gone on the cross. Isn't it? So once he went on the cross, salvation is for all of mankind. But before he went on the cross, we would find him ministering only to the Jews. Because he was acting on the covenant or the promise which he had with Abraham. God had promised Abraham that I am going to, uh, you know, uh, demonstrate my power in your life and in the lives of your descendants. And so you find Jesus only ministering to Jews. Okay. But there were two incidents where non-Jews came to Jesus. And they asked Jesus for a miracle. So one is uh, the centurion who came, the Roman centurion in um, Matthew chapter 8. His servant was sick. Okay? So he comes and he asks Jesus. And we've seen his example. He says, Lord, only say a word and my servant will be healed. Now this centurion was not... Uh, a descendant of Abraham. So what must Jesus do? Technically, he must refuse the miracle because he's not from the lineage of Abraham. But when there was faith in the heart of a man, Jesus did the miracle anyway. It's a very big thing. Somebody is outside of the covenant. All the promises are for the people of the covenant. But here comes a man with what in his heart? Faith in his heart to Jesus. And he's not even part of the covenant. And he says, Lord, I know if you say one word, my servant will be healed. And Jesus is amazed. He says, wow, what faith. I have not seen this kind of faith. Great faith. He appreciates him and he says, okay, you go. Your servant will be healed. And scripture says, in that same hour, immediately, the servant was healed. So, God moves wherever there is faith. Even when Jesus was supposed to minister only under the covenant, he still did a miracle for people who were outside of the covenant because of faith. One man carried faith and the miracle happened. In the same way, in Matthew chapter 15, there is a lady. She comes to Jesus and uh, she says, uh, you know, my child is uh, tormented, oppressed by demons. Jesus, um, you need to set my child free. You know what Jesus tells her? The bread, which is to be given to the children cannot be given to the dogs. What do you think he meant? It's quite uh, hurtful to hear something like that. Imagine we go to Jesus and we say, uh, you need to heal my child or my loved one. And Jesus says the bread which belongs to the children cannot be given to the dogs. It's as if Jesus is saying, uh, you know, you're not a child. Okay, and it's as if he's saying, you know, you come under the category of, uh, uh, or, you know, like you're not accepted. So when you hear something like that, what would be our first reaction? Be so upset. I came all the way to talk to Jesus and look how he's talking to me. You know, he's so, he's being so rude. But think about the lady. She was so desperate. She didn't care about the comment. She said, Lord, even the dogs eat the crumbs. Meaning, she had decided in her heart, 
whatever he says i don't care i want my miracle i will take my miracle and only then go so she doesn't get angry she doesn't get upset she shows her faith by saying even the dogs get the crumbs lord and jesus is like amazed wow i can't believe you're still standing here and talking to me even after i said that the bread only belongs to the children right so think about this she was outside of the covenant okay she's a like a um, syrophenician a woman canaanite woman but on that day she got a miracle so god did a miracle outside of the covenant because there was faith in a woman's heart so it really tells us so much about god that when god finds faith it's as if he kept the rules aside and said okay there are rules but i'll keep it aside because you have faith let me do a miracle in your life and there are so many people even under the old covenant when you see people like nama and ruth these are all people who were outside of the covenant but god did amazing miracles in their lives rehab they are not people who are from the the abrahamic lineage but what was so special about these people they had faith so when we have faith god will pass over a crowd to do a miracle for the person who carries faith okay so um this is how jesus worked he accommodated people even if they were outside of god's agenda and he responded to their faith are you all with me okay fine so let me just look at um, some comments here lucy says god's word for the gentiles and jews too he wanted people to understand this okay ah uh, yes lucy so uh, god wanted everyone to understand the word but when it came to the covenant there were i mean there are certain restrictions so it's only the people who are part of the covenant who can receive of the covenant blessings so which is why jesus was trying to stress and say that the jews were the rightful um you know like as or they were the rightful people to receive the blessings and yet people who carried faith from outside of the covenant still received their miracle okay so i i really uh, hope that um clarifies some things now let's move on to the seventh section here where it says jesus helped people when they struggled in faith so there are times when people were um finding it difficult to have faith in god but in these times jesus did not push them away instead he said don't worry you know he encouraged and he said it's okay you can have faith in me and you know he sort of um kept them in trust and in faith and miracles happened so there was a man whose son was demon possessed and uh, he was struggling to have faith in jesus you know what he said in mark 9:24 he said lord i believe but help my unbelief meaning i have faith in my heart but there's also like a struggle that i'm going through jesus uh, please help me and jesus helped that man so even in our lives there could be times when you know we may feel like oh i don't have a uh, faith as big as a mountain or i don't have great faith i don't have faith that will impress jesus like this man who's looking for a deliverance for his child he says yes lord i believe but i also am struggling with unbelief help my unbelief but in this case jesus delivered the child anyway right so uh when we seemingly lack you know the kind of faith that we should have we find that 
Jesus doesn't push us away. He still helps us. Think about the time when uh, uh, Jesus was, um, you know, in he uh, the disciples were in the boat and Jesus was walking on the water. Matthew chapter 14, okay, Jesus is walking on the water. And in that situation, what happened? Peter says, Lord, you know, uh, have me come to you. And so Jesus is very impressed. Imagine who would tell Jesus. Peter and the disciples are on the boat. Jesus is walking on the water. Among all the disciples, there was only one man, Peter, who said, Lord, you ask me to come to you. He even imagined that it is possible for him to walk on water. That itself would have impressed Jesus. He would have thought, finally, one guy, one guy got it. Great, you know. So one person, Peter, he says, Lord, ask me to come to you. And Jesus is so happy. He says, come. Then what happens next? Peter steps out of the water. And it's like a movie scene, right, in our minds. So he's walking on the water. It's amazing because till, till now, none of the disciples have walked on the water. Jesus, he's walking. Coolly, he's walking on the water, right? So there's this great demonstration of faith where Peter says, ask me to come. And Jesus says, come. Peter steps out. He starts to walk on the water. But what happens in the next scene? Peter looks here and there. He realizes, oh my goodness, I'm, on I'm standing on water. How can this happen? This is not science. Okay, the moment he thinks, he looks here and there, he starts to sink. So he's falling into the water. What should Jesus have done? Very good. <laughs> you need to sink because you didn't believe in me. Did he do that? Thank God. No, he didn't do that. Right? He gave his hand. And he helped him up, right? And said, hey, Peter, why did you doubt? Why did you doubt? Oh, you of little faith. Why did you doubt you were walking so nicely? But you looked at the situation, circumstance, got scared, and then sank, right? So it happens even in our lives sometimes. We start walking with God, full of faith, you know, miracles, all supernatural, everything is happening. But... Suddenly, we look around, we get distracted, and it affects our faith. And we start sinking. And we think, how did this happen? I was walking so nicely. I was walking so well with the Lord. And now I'm sinking. What will God think about me? But in this situation, Jesus is not you know, letting him sink and um, uh, you know, suffer. Instead, he gives his hand and he says, OK, come on, come up. Okay, and he teaches him a lesson. Of course, he gives him one small rebuke. Oh, you of little faith. You know, one scolding does happen after that. But then he says, why did you doubt? You should have believed all along. Not just in the beginning. You have to believe all along. Right? Only then, Peter would have been able to walk throughout. And uh, in, in a particular sermon, uh, they put it this way. And they said, when Jesus said, come, right? one word is enough. How did Peter walk? It's as if he walked on that one word. When God gives us a word, a word of promise, we need to hold on to that word. And sometimes we are walking only on that one word. Yeah, there's water, there's storm, there's everything happening around. But you're walking on the word of God. And the word of God is sustaining you in that situation. So never forget that one word. If God could only say one word and say, come or do this, do that. I'm calling you something. All we need is one word. You hold on to that word. We can even walk on water. Right? But unfortunately, distraction, doubt. And Peter looked around, got scared. But thank God, Jesus doesn't push us away, even when we fail in our faith. He still gave his hand and said, okay, come on, Peter, come back up. And, um, you know, uh, things went on. 
he taught him a lesson so even today uh, just for us to remember there could be areas where we are struggling in our faith but know that god doesn't push us away he wants us to develop our faith but he encourages us to develop our faith okay so uh, he helped people who struggled in their faith okay let's go ahead we will take a 10 minute break right now we'll come back and discuss more okay thank you thank you everybody <laughs>